back to the Rabbit Cat Homestead. My name is Ashley. Well, today I am going to explain my complete process when it comes to raising rabbits. Um, I'm going to go through my hutches and how many stalls I have, how many breeders I have, um, how I go about raising my grow outs, um, and just little things like that. A couple months ago, I had a subscriber reach out to me and um, they told me that they really liked my content on rabbits, but they're having a hard time piecing together my whole process as a whole. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and explain that today, just kind of get it out all in one video so you can see um, how I go about doing my entire process, um, all the things that I have to raise them, um, and we'll just go through it all. So let's get started. So this is Darling. We just held her back um, from a litter and she's going to be one of our breeders. So I've been holding her a lot and carrying her around everywhere, trying to get her well socialized so she's easy to handle as a breeder. Okay, so I have three hutches. Um, this first hutch here, it has three stalls, two of which are smaller and the third one is bigger. And that's because I have two breeding bucks. Um, you don't need two. I just like to have two in case something were to happen to my other buck. Um, I can still breed because if I have to save a buck from one of my litters, um, that's kind of time consuming until I can start breeding my rabbits again. Um, so I like to have two on hand. Um, that's just the way I like to do it. But it does cost more to have two bucks. So. It really just depends on how you want to do things. So this first hutch has three stalls. Um, two are for my bucks and they're smaller stalls and one is a larger stall for one of my does. Um, so let me go ahead and give you an up close look. So here is my first rabbit hutch. It has three sections in it and I house all breeders in here, two bucks and one doe. Now, these two stalls right here are smaller. They're the same size, um, but they're both smaller than this section here. Um, I keep uh, my older buck, and then I have a newer buck right here. They're both pure silver foxes. And then I have my brand new doe that I just held back from my grow out litter right over there. Um, we keep these stalls for our does um, bigger than all of the other ones because um, we breed them, they stay in this stall, they have their babies in this stall um, until the babies are weaned. And then once the babies are weaned, they go into our grow out hutch, which I will talk about here in a few moments. All right, so in this first stall is my oldest buck, Earl. Um, he's a pure silver fox buck, and um, we keep him in the smaller stall. He doesn't need a whole lot of space because he's not going to have babies in there with him, obviously. So um, we typically we take these boxes out um, in the warmer months, but he really likes to have it. I think he, I see him in it often and especially early in the mornings. So I just go ahead and let him keep it. You know, I just I observe my rabbits and just kind of see each one of them's a little different personality wise and he seems to like his nest box so I leave it in there with him but this is my buck he's uh, given us a lot of litters and he's a really good boy I love silver fox they're just so beautiful and their fur is beautiful I'm sorry I hear you all right so here's an up-close look of the hutch itself like for my silver fox buck. He has a nest box in there just because he likes it, not because he needs it. But he's a good boy. 
This is my second silver fox buck, Arlo. He's a good boy. Beautiful silver tips, I know. I like the comfort of having two bucks, um, just in case something were to happen to one of them. That way I don't have to hold one back and um, wait a while, wait a few months until I can breed my does again. So that's why I have two. You don't need two, and of course it costs more in feed to have two, but I like to have two. It's nice to have two bucks as well because then I can breed two does in one day using both of my bucks rather than, you know, doing one doe one day and the next one the next day. Um, it's just like how I like to do it. Good boy, Arlo. So, like I said, Arlo has the same size cage as Earl. He doesn't have a nest box because it's not really necessary and I think he prefers the space. So in this third section of my first hutch is a larger area and that is where I keep my does. Um, they get plenty of space because they're going to be um, kindling and nursing and you know taking care of their babies so they need plenty of space and plenty of room for all those rabbits in there. Um, I have two bucks and three breeding does, one of which is not ready to be bred yet because we just held her back from my grow out litter. So she will not be ready to breed until probably about September, October time. Right now it's the beginning of July. Um, so typically we wait until about six months, six, seven. It takes a little longer for larger breed, uh, breeds of rabbits to start breeding. Um, Silver Fox is a larger breed. Um, so they don't breed as early as some of the smaller breeds like Rex rabbits. So this is Darling, she's going to be one of our breeders. And she has plenty of space in here to run around. Let me give you a closer look. So as you can see, she has plenty of space. So when we do breed her, she'll have plenty of space for her, her and her babies. All right, so that's my first hutch. All right, so recap. I have that first hutch over there. It has three stalls. Two are smaller because I have two bucks and one is bigger because I have a doe in there that is not ready to be bred, but that whole hutch has um, breeders in it. The hutch I'm about to show you behind me is a grow out hutch and I use this only for grow outs. <clears throat> now in the past I have um, put my grow outs on grass um, in a temporary PVC style um, rabbit tractor. We've used it for multiple things. Um, we used it for turkeys at one point, we used it for chickens, and we've used it for rabbits. Um, and it's just a temporary thing. It's not something that they're out in all the time. They wouldn't stay the night in it because it's super light, so it wouldn't be safe. Um, so that's what we've been using in the past. This year we are going to build an actual rabbit tractor, um, which we'll be doing a video on, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but we don't have a permanent rabbit tractor yet for our grow outs. Um, that's something that, I mean, we have all the materials to do it, we just haven't had the time to get to it. So that will be coming in the near future. Um, but as for right now, like I said, we used to use that temporary PVC tractor. Um, when we haven't had chickens in our chicken tractors, we've put our um, grow out rabbits in those before. They've never been in them overnight though, because like I said, those are chicken tractors. They're not rabbit tractors and rabbits will dig out. So you need to have an actual rabbit um, tractor for them designed for meat rabbits so they can't dig out. So um, just temporary fixes to get them on grass. But that was just until we finally get our rabbit tractor built, um, which is just a matter of time at this point. Um, but most of the time um, they're in this grow out hutch. This hutch is smaller than the first hutch I showed you. Um, it's split in half. It has two stalls and this is just strictly for grow outs. I keep 
um, males on one side and females on the other, and it holds quite a bit of rabbits. So here's my grow out hutch. The first side here, they've scattered their hay all over the place. Grow outs can be kind of messy, but these are my males that I have in here right now. And both of these sections are the same size as this third section I showed you for my does. So this hutch as a whole is smaller than the first one I showed you, but that's because there's less stalls. So both of these sections are the same size as my does um, areas that they get in their hutches. So I keep my bucks in one side and my females in the other, and it's always been plenty enough space for what I need. Here's my doe's side. So these grow out rabbits that you just saw, they are 11 weeks old and they'll be ready to be processed next week. All right, so that's my grow out hutch. So I have a breeder hutch with three stalls. I have a grow out hutch with two stalls and I have one more hutch. So I have a total of three hutches. All right, so if you've watched my previous videos, you know that I had a grow out hutch right in front of that wood pile over there. Um, we actually, we were cleaning up the yard, just trying to make it nicer looking for the summer months. Um, so we moved it from over there to behind our wood pile, which is right back here just in case you're wondering why things look a little bit different. All right, so this is my third and last hutch. This hutch is built exactly the same way as my grow out hutch, um, but this hutch I use for my does. So both does get plenty of space, just like that third section in my first hutch. Um, like I said, the does need a whole lot more space because they're gonna be raising babies in here. Um, but both of these does right now are pregnant and they're actually due to get their nest boxes today, which is why you'll see I have some nest boxes over there and a bag of hay ready to go. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you that just because it's something I need to do today. Um, but I will also show you the inside and also show you my breeding does. So um, my second doe here, um, I have two does that I'm actually able to breed right now. Um, my third one isn't ready and of age to breed yet, um, but <clears throat> this is Lucky. I'll go ahead and get her out for you so you can see her. She is pregnant, so if she gets a little stressed out, I'm just gonna put her right back. <clears throat> she is pregnant, so I'm not gonna pick her up right now. I don't wanna stress her out, but I'll give you a little bit of a closer look. All right, so this is Lucky. She's been a wonderful doe. She's had quite a few litters for me. And she's actually pregnant right now. And I'm gonna be giving her her nest box today. So I got my nest boxes. We make all of our nest boxes. I've done a video kind of talking a little bit more in depth about that. Um, but I give them aspen shavings on the very bottom because they absorb a lot better than the hay does. And then I put um, hay on top and then I just kind of let her do what she will with her nest box because um, she's going to make it the way that she wants. So I like to put the, I put, I put a little bit of finer hay in here on top of the shavings and then I put a whole bunch right on top of the nest box and then she'll start making her nest. She always gets excited when I give her her nest box.
All right, and then on the other side of this hutch is Thumper. She is a pure silver fox doe. She is also pregnant right now, and she's also gonna be getting a nest box as well. Um, she has the same amount of space. All three of my does have the same amount of space um, to you know, kindle and uh, nurse and have their babies. So let me go ahead and get her her nest box. She also gets excited to get her nest box. All right, so as you just saw, I have three hutches in total. One has three stalls and the other two have two stalls. Um, I have two bucks and three breeding does, one of which is not old enough to breed yet. So I'm currently only breeding two of them. Um, I have all silver fox rabbits except for one. One is half rex, half silver fox, which is lucky, my, my older brown doe. So when it comes to my grow outs, they stay in that grow out hutch, especially in the winter time. In the summertime, I like to try to get them out, out on the grass. Um, it kind of, it helps eliminate some of the feed costs. Um, and like I said before, we've used a temporary PVC tractor. Um, it actually got plowed. We kind of plowed into it over the winter. We just got so much snow and kind of forgot that we where we put it and we ended up plowing snow into it and now it's mangled and ruined so uh, we have to get our permanent grow out rabbit tractor ready to go um, we need to build it we're going to do a video on it so you'll get to see that and when it comes to breeding um, the older breeds i breed anywhere from six to eight months old it takes them longer to mature um, and to start breeding effectively until they're a little bit older. Um, the smaller breeds, it doesn't take as long, like the Rex, Rex rabbits, you can breed them earlier. Um, so once they're bred, it takes 28 to 31 days um, until they kindle, which is when they have their babies. And then on day 25 of their pregnancy, they get a nest box. Once the babies are born, I always document that date. And depending on the time of year, I will rebreed my rabbits when their kits that are in with them um, are six weeks old. Um, and that gives them plenty of time to finish off the current litter they have, wean, and then have a break and rest before they have their new litter of rabbits. And I typically do that on the nicer times of year in the spring and fall. Um, times of year like right now when it's really hot and muggy, I won't do that to them. I will. Um, rebreed them when their kits are eight weeks old and just give them plenty of rest plenty of time um, but it is definitely more efficient to breed them at six weeks old when they still have kits with them um, but i take i like to take it easy on my rabbits and i want them to be well cared for and healthy so i don't like breeding them one right after the other i like to give them breaks and take good care of them so I have a rabbit breeding log and I have one of these sheets for each one of my does. Um, I have three does. I just kept a new doe darling. So I made her up a log um, and I just put their name and the date, their date of birth. And then the first time I breed them, I write it down. I write down the date. I write down when they get their nest box, when they're expected to kindle. Um, then I write down the actual kindle date how many were born, um, how many have died in that litter. Um, and then I'll write down when I want to rebreed. Like I said, it depends on the time of year, whether I breed when her kids are six or eight weeks old for the doe. Um, and then I'll write down the butcher date and I process my rabbits when they're 12 weeks old. Um, that's just a good time frame that I found works for me. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's a pretty, Raising rabbits is a very simple process. It doesn't take a whole lot. And if you're able to do things like get them out on grass or grow your own lettuce, like I do, um, 
you can save a lot of money raising rabbits and producing your own meat. All right, so let me give you a recap. Um, I have three hutches, I have three does, and I have three big stalls for them. One of my hutches is split in half and there's space for my male grow outs and my female grow outs. And then I have two bucks on hand in case something were to happen to one of my bucks. All right, so just to give you kind of a perspective um, on one of my does, what I've gotten out of her um, throughout her life. And that's one of the reasons why I like keeping these logs because I can keep this and document and see you know, who I've bred her with, how many times she's been bred, um, and all the information on here. So, um, Thumper was born of, in March of 2021. Uh, she had her first litter in October of 21, and she had 11 babies. Um, and then we bred her again in 2022, and she had nine babies. And then... Let's see, we bred her actually four times in 2022. Um, each time the number goes down. So she went from the very beginning to 11 babies, went down to nine, and then she had 11 babies again. Um, then she went down to eight, five, and this year she's down to five again. And then this current litter, we'll see how many she has. Hopefully it's more than five, but um, she's been bred one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times throughout her life. Um, and like I said, she was born in um, March of 2021. So she's had quite a few litters. Um, it's, it's pretty cool that we were able to breed her uh, four times in 2022. Um, but she's a good mom. We're on our second litter with her this year. Um, we could probably be a little farther than that but um earlier at the beginning of the year i wanted to get all my does on the same schedule so i kind of waited to breed her again just so i could have everybody you know kind of in the same schedule because i had three does all breeding at different time frames and it was just a lot to keep track of um, so i just kind of held her back for a little bit gave her kind of an extended break and waited until everybody was on the same schedule that way i could manage my breeding program a little bit more effectively. So I feed my rabbits um, pellets and Timothy hay and I also give them plenty of fresh um, lettuce and you know clover and little miscellaneous things that I can for forage for. Um, but right now it's a nice time of year because I can grow a lot of things for them um, so I don't have to feed them as much pellets. The pellets, um, I feed a lot of pellets to my grow outs. I'd like to kind of get away from that. I really don't like the ingredients and what I see in those pellets. So I'd like to kind of get away from that, but I haven't gotten there quite yet. My grow outs eat a lot of hay, grass, lettuce, and pellets. They eat more pellets than my um, breeders do. Um, I, I'm very careful how much pellets I give to my breeders because you don't want them to get too heavy. Um, but I like to give them the pellets because I know they're getting everything that they need. Um, because rabbits need um, salt and minerals and the pellets provide that. So I give them a little bit of that each day just so they can get um, what they need from the pellets. And then the rest of their diet comes from the Timothy hay and um, the things that I'm able to forage for on our homestead. It has been raining constantly all summer long. All of June, um, so far, july it has just not stopped raining so it's been hard to get out here and just you know get a video out to you guys but it even looks like it's gonna rain and the forecast is full of rain as well so all right so a little bit of a homestead update we got this from our neighbor um she was just gonna tear it down and take it to the dump so we took it and we're gonna make a chicken coop out of it so that'll be a lot of fun. You guys will get to see that. And I have my garden over here that isn't doing as well as I'd like it to because it's just been, because we've just been getting so much rain. But check out my rosehip bush that I planted last year. 
It is growing so much. It has a little flower bud on here and I can't wait to start getting rose hips from this. Rose hips are a natural source of vitamin C, which is extremely good for you. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, let's go check out the garden. My pole beans are finally growing up my trellis. I planted those a while ago, but because of the rain, it's just kind of stunted their growth. Same with my tomato plants. But as you can see, I need to weed, but I have my tomato plants over there. I have squash, lots of cucumbers, got my green beans right here. I have some pumpkin plants, which I've never grown pumpkins before, so that'll be interesting to see how they do. And then I also planted some watermelon and cantaloupe seeds, which I need to thin out because they're awfully close together. And then I have all my lettuce for my rabbits. I would like to get some more planted. I actually have some seeded in the house right now under a grow light. Um, just waiting until those are ready to come out so I can keep the lettuce going. All my carrots, my strawberries. My strawberries really didn't do all that well this year. I think I'm going to need to put a little bit more um, manure in the garden next year. I'm not really sure what's going on with those, but I did not get one strawberry this year. But I have some broccoli plants. Lots of onion plants. As you can see, a lot of them are tipped over because of the heavy rain. And then I got some potato plants over there. And my compost bin, which I wish was inside of my garden so I could access it a little better. kind of messy over here but you can see my PVC tractor completely destroyed because we plowed into it over the winter so kind of a bummer but we're gonna make a more permanent one soon so I'm looking forward to that a bird tried to put a nest here so on our homestead we have rabbits chickens and quail. Um, we didn't have chickens all winter. We actually just got some chicks that we're gonna raise up. Um, but we have quail, which is exciting. We've been getting a lot of eggs from them. Um, but we've kind of been learning about quail. You know, we're not experts with quail, so we've been learning a lot. We have a hutch on our porch that we keep all of our female birds in, um, all of the egg layers, and we had to separate the males because there was too many males in with the females. And they were pecking their heads and exposing, they just were not being nice to our female quail. So we had to get, move our quail out into our chicken tractor, believe it or not, which actually isn't high enough for quail. Um, you're supposed to have them either one foot height or I think it's a six foot height because they startle easy and they jump straight up and they could break their necks. But, but I mean, I've had these male quail in here for probably three weeks now, maybe longer, and they're all fine. So I've been keeping them in here because they, don't, they haven't been harming my females. Um, I actually tried keeping one in there with my females. I have six of them in there, which I know is kind of a high ratio from male to female quail. Um, typically, I think it's four, maybe five, but I have six, so that could have been the problem. I don't know, um, but I had one in there with them, and he was still beating on them, so I moved him back out here. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is we're probably going to process. I have four of them, four males in this chicken tractor right now, so I'm probably going to process three of them and keep one, and hopefully when the breeding season is over and they stop crowing, um, I can put one back in there and they'll be fine until next spring and then I could separate them again maybe. But I want to have that option to hatch out quail so I don't want to get rid of all of my males so we'll see. 
um, but I'll show you them in here. They're pretty neat looking birds. So here's one of my nails. You can tell from its chest. Um, you can usually check them and see if they're male or female by looking at their chest or checking their vent, but this one's pretty easy to tell that he's a male and he crows constantly. And he's feisty, which is why he's not in with the girls. But isn't he beautiful? I mean, look at that. Such a beautiful bird. <laughs> so there's my four quail, my four male quail. I need to uh, move this tractor so they have some fresh grass, but. All right, and then I'll go show you up on the porch our female quail. They've been laying some eggs for us. I've been getting anywhere from four to five eggs a day and I have six hens in there. So we've been getting quite a few eggs and collecting them because they're very small, but it's pretty neat. So here's our quail hutch. They have a little sand bath there, water, and then they have this food container that they stick their heads in. It keeps their food clean. It looks gross, but they're on wire and there's a tray right here that we pull out and clean off. In the time that I left and came back, she already took all the hay off the top of her box and put it in there. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was beneficial to you. I hope it's what um, one of my subscribers was looking for. Uh, if you ever have any other questions or are looking for um, other types of content when it comes to rabbits, please let me know, contact me, um, let me know, and um, I'll be sure to try to get those videos out for you. But in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for watching and God bless. <laughs>